Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. I am excited to share with you guys today uh, th- something that a lot of you have asked is how do I actually host someone in their emotions or how do I allow myself to be hosted in my emotions and this is a really good question a lot of people don't even know what it means to host what like what does that okay what does that sentence even mean how do you hosting someone in their emotions as humans in the timeline, we are here to allow ourselves to have adventures, to grow, to play. The main thing, like why are we here, is to grow our consciousness in some way. You can call it expand, learn, all the, you can say many different things. I like to say grow our consciousness, ex- like level up in some way on a soul level. So we are way bigger in spirit and we are focusing some of our consciousness to come down into these physical bodies to have a temporary physical experience and the main thing is how can we grow from this how can we learn from this so before we dive right into that i would invite you as i do in a lot of my podcasts is to take a deep breath with me so if you're in a spot where you can Uh, you feel comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes and breathe into your stomach where your stomach expands as much as you can like you're pregnant. So breathe in. And then imagine the energy going all the way up through your body and the top of your head and then hold it at the top. And then sigh whatever needs to come out. (sighs) You can even wiggle your body a little bit. Let the energy come in. And then we'll do it one more time. So breathe in, expanding your stomach all the way up the top of your head and hold for a minute and then let it out and notice how you feel in your body right now is there any sensations happening in your body any thing that feels stuck you can send some energy through that allow it to release tell yourself I'm ready to release this And just know that you are safe, you are loved, you are worthy of connection, all of the beautiful things that you so desire in your timeline. You are worthy of all those things and they are all coming to you and through you. (laughs) So, you know, in let me just back up. Talking about hosting emotions, we as a society currently very much value, put on very high value, intellectual intelligence, so IQ. So when, when you're in school, this starts very soon in school, is we get tested, do we have a, a high IQ, intellectual intelligence? And through most of our timelines, we are through school and then through the corp, like the world, the business world, it's like, how smart are you? How much can you do with your intellectual mind and this is where a lot of people put their value so most people are spending a lot of their times experiencing this reality in their minds when i started learning more about our body intelligence and what's happening in our body i soon discovered that our 80 percent of our experiencing on this timeline is actually happening in our body. So how you feel, what's going on, like whatever is going on in your timeline, a lot of it is how is the energy moving through your body? And 20% is actually happening in your head, your head, your physical mind, your monkey mind, whatever you want to call it, your ego. This is the thing that keeps you alive keep you safe, make sure you can keep going and experiencing things on the timeline. I like to view it as kind of like the computer processing everything that's happening in the body. And so whether you recognize it or not consciously, this is what's happening. And so most people don't, they're not happy in their life because they're focusing so much on the mental and not actually Folk, not allowing 
the energy to go through their body and circulate and honor the experience of how is the energy moving through my body and then processing that with our physical mind, our intellectual intelligence. So there is something that is now coming into mainstream that I've known about for many years. It is called emotional intelligence. So just like intellectual intelligence, um, emotional intelligence can actually be something that can be measured, you know, for people who are very like scientific, like, is this true? Is this a real thing? Or is this some foo-foo spiritual thing? It's like, no, scientists have actually monitored this. And what they track as emotional intelligence is how much are you able to allow the energy to go through your, your body in a way where you're consciously aware of it and you're able to host it like you're able to hold space for it in a conscious way so it's happening whether you know it's happening consciously or not and emotional intelligence is not only am I aware of what's happening the sensations in my body what my body is experiencing in the timeline and the cues that my body is giving me but also and also it is can I sense what is happening in other people's bodies can I sense what is happening in the energy that is happening in the room, in the space that I'm at, the environment. And because we haven't given that much conscious awareness to this in mainstream, someone who is emotionally intelligent has even been classed by many as psychic or something witchy or something that is, oh, that's just weird, that person over there that can kind of sense everything. But as this comes more into mainstream and like our conscious awareness on a global level, we'll start to realize that this is actually how we were supposed to be doing it the whole time. As in like everything is energy. Emotion is just energy, like literally energy in motion. It's energy going through your body. And the best way to have this be a happy experience or what we judge as a positive experience is to hold space for it in our conscious awareness so that means like okay I'm feeling this thing this this feeling of whether it's positive or negative is in my body and using this as a it's kind of like this trigger of like my body is telling me something and if it's a negative thing it's like okay so let's go into the computer processing that's in our brain and ask ourselves do I have a belief that doesn't feel good in my body because if I have beliefs that are positive for me and that are beneficial for me then the energy is going to be able to flow in and out of my body in a way that's fluid and feels good if I have a negative belief then that means that the energy is going to get stuck because I don't believe that I'm worthy of this or I feel like I'm unsafe or something like this and I don't like saying like negative or positive because everything is is an experience that we're having. So again, if we go back to the baseline of we are souls having, choosing to have an experience to grow our consciousness. When we are in the soul level, we don't really view, like when you're not in your body as in your spirit, you don't really view it as positive or negative pain or joy. You just view it as like, okay, I'm growing my consciousness. This is a beautiful thing. That, That in itself is a beautiful thing. When we are down here in the timeline and we are experiencing this physical reality, the feeling of holding a negative belief in our consciousness and then how the, how the energy gets stuck in our body is very much not a feel good thing, you know? So like a lot of people, because they don't have this conscious awareness of how energy moves through our bodies and through an emotional intelligence, they're not giving like this much, that much attention. And they're just trying to put a bandaid on it through medication, through again more mental processing of psychoanalysis or get a therapist and all of that is great there's place for all of that if it feels good in your body I mean I don't personally agree with medication Um, what I meant more is like therapy if you if you're having someone to help you but there is this is why there's now new types of therapy so in today's world what people normally think of as going to a therapist is actually something called psychoanalysis so this is actually like mental processing and this is great like you can also like go through your negative beliefs on a mental processing level and release them and then the energy can feel good in your body 
I've done that. I've, I've had therapy in my past and it was great, but it also didn't feel all the way connected for me because I was like, but I'm, I'm like experiencing a lot in my body and I want someone to help me with what is happening in my body because I could intuitively sense that my body has this very high intelligence ever since I was little. I could sense many things. I could intuitively pick up on how everyone was feeling in the room, what was happening. And I have, this is something where it's, because I've allowed it to grow to fruition, I actually can understand almost 100% of what people are saying, no matter what language they are speaking. And this is something where people don't really believe me until they see it. And they're like, how did you know that they were saying that? I'm like, I just picked it up. And so if you allow space for this, there's actually a lot more therapists today that are doing something called somatic experiencing. So somatic means it's literally your body intelligence. It's like the the sensations that are happening in your body. And so now you start seeing online popping up um, a lot of amazing people that are somatic, like therapists. I have a very close friend on the island here who has a whole institute for women specifically for somatic. It's called Somatic Institute for Women. And I love this because also, especially as women, we feel things so much more. So like, If someone is trying to mentally analyze something, I got a lot of emotions. I got a lot of like feelings about all of this. So yeah, of course I want to get to the negative belief and release it and like be able to help the mental processing so that I can allow the energy to go through. But sometimes I need to go the other way where I'm like, how do I feel right now? This is, this feeling is so big. How do I feel? And I want to be held in that. I want someone to witness me in my story. And this is also something really beautiful. So when holding space for someone emotionally means I'm not going to try and mentally analyze what's happening with you. I'm going to go the other direction, which is still going to get to the same place of helping you release whatever negative beliefs and getting you to more of your core of who you are, which is knowing the knowingness that we are worthy of all of the love, all of the abundance and all of the connection just for being souls coming in here on the timeline. But we're going to go from the other direction where I really hold space, which literally means I'm going to say, okay, how are you feeling in this moment? So I'm going to hold, I'm going to talk to you. So I'm going to to say it in words that are very mental. I'm going to talk to you and ask you questions about how you are feeling right now and follow the trail of how you are feeling to get to the bottom of the core belief. And as we are, as as I am asking you how you're feeling and getting deeper and deeper into your feelings, there is also a release happening. Because when we do that, we're releasing energy in our body that feels stuck. And this is also why it feels so good when someone holds space for us to work through our emotions and release this energy. Because suddenly we're like... Oh, I feel so much better. Thank you for holding space for me. So I'll give you an example. This happens sometimes daily with Ferdy and I, uh, where I'm like, I'm having this emotion. I'm having this emotion. And what I would love for him to do is to say, how are you feeling in your body right now? Hold on. (laughs) Afro wants to come in. And now she wants to go right back out. Oh, having an animal. My fur baby. Um, okay, so what I love when, when I'm being hosted in my emotions is I come to someone I love. So I'll just give Faraday as an example. And I'm like, oh, I feel this thing. And it's like, ah, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand why. But this is like I have this really big feeling of like, frustration or anger or something and then for him to be like okay do you want to talk about it and I'm like yes but I don't know what's going on and like I don't have it all figured out I don't know I'm like in I'm in the messiness of it the emotional messiness of it and he's like okay so what do you feel in your body right now and I can say something like "Mm, I feel a little tense in my stomach and like my shoulder, something's going on there. And like, I kind of feel like I need to cry, but I don't know why. And then he's like, okay, 
So what, like, what, what is the first thing that comes to your mind of like, what's like, tell me more emotions or tell me what's going on. And then it's usually like, I'll explain a situation where I'm like, this thing happened. I talked to this person or I'm feeling this, like something's coming up, but I don't really understand why it's causing so much emotion right now. And then he's like, okay, well, let's talk about that. Like, how do you feel when you, when, like when this thing happens? And I'm like, well, I don't, it makes you feel frustrated and it's like okay well why does it make you feel frustrated because I don't I don't want this to happen I I want everyone to feel happy I want you know I want everyone to be like good on the timeline and it's like okay well what belief do you have that makes you feel that you're responsible for how how everyone's feeling in, in the world like why are you responsible for taking care of everyone and I'm like I don't actually know. I just love everyone and I want everyone to be happy. (laughs) And it's like, okay, that's, I honor that. You can say like, I honor that. I honor that you're feeling that way, but do you actually want to be responsible for everyone, have to process all of their emotions and make sure that they're all awake and okay and like be the mom of everyone? And I'm like, no, I just want to play. I just want to go have fun and go swimming and hang out with Afro. It's like, okay, well then how do you, how do you move through this like is there a positive thing that you can do and at this point he can ask like do you want my opinion on this so for me this is very important when someone asks me do you want my opinion on this instead of jumping into you need to do this you need to do that you need to do this and when he asks me if I if I say no I actually don't want your opinion right now I still feel like I just need to release and then he's like okay do you want to like hit some pillows do you want to scream do you want to just like move this energy through and I'm like yes and then I go like scream into some pillows and then I'm like oh, okay no I don't want to take care of everyone or like at least be responsible for everyone I just want to be able to shine and be my inner child and you know and then help by just shining as this vibration and if people want to come I can guide them but I'm like not responsible for them and he's like okay that's a great so do you feel like do you feel do you feel complete right now and I'm like oh yeah I do thank you So this is a perfect example because so many people think that a lot of people are scared, one, to be too much. Like when they are sharing their emotions, they're scared of being too much. Like I will share too much of my emotions and it will overwhelm the people I care about. And then they will, it will cause disconnection. Like they won't want to hang out with me anymore. They won't want to talk to me. This is like most people. And I've also felt this before because I have a lot of emotions, you know, and there's the second part where it's like sometimes we don't bring stuff up with people because we don't want to be we want space to share our emotions without someone just coming right in and trying to fix it by telling us what to do like that's great if I have already released my emotions and we're at the end of it and I feel this like like big release in my body and I feel better and then I'm like yeah what do you think you know So many of us are programmed intellectually to try and solve the problem without creating space for the emotions and the energy to go through the body. And this is why like when you go talk to a friend, I've done this many times in the past, when I go talk to a friend, I want to be hosted. This is before I understood like what this meant. I went and spoke to them without asking if they had space. This is a very important thing I'll put out there. When you have emotional intelligence, you understand that you are asking someone to energetically hold space for you. So it is very important to ask them, like literally, do they have the uh, energy to hold space? So if I'm going to a friend in the past, like they, okay, I'll just back up. I was, this happens to me a lot in the past before I understood boundaries and I understood like what was going on is friends would just come to me and they're like, this thing happened. Da, 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 da. And I would one, not have space. Like I'm tired. I don't actually have energy to host this. And I could see right away what they needed to do in order to fix the problem. So instead of holding space for them and like walking them through the steps, I just said like, how do you feel in your body? What emotions are coming up? What happened? What do you actually believe to be true about this? Is there any like beliefs that you want to adjust here? I would just go straight into, you need to do this thing or you need to fix this thing. And then they would sometimes fight me because they're like, 
oh, that's not actually it or la, la, but it's, it's because they don't feel this energy of release. And so, or they might be like, yeah, you're right. But then they go home and like, I haven't honored their time. So this is something that's very important. We all are here to grow our individual consciousness. So when you host someone in their emotions, you're allowing them the space by mirroring them. You're just, all you're doing is holding up a mirror. You're not fixing, you're not telling them what to do. You're not jumping into their timeline and doing like fixing things for them energetically. You're just like witnessing them in their journey. And this is such a beautiful thing because each of us, whether it's conscious or not, we want to live out we want to be the main characters in our timeline and we want to grow our own consciousness like i don't want faraday to grow my consciousness unless like basically by telling me what to do right away unless i invite him in what i would what i love is when faraday holds space for me to figure it out for myself and then i'm like oh thank you for being the mirror. Thank you for holding space. Thank you for, you know, for giving me a hug. And then of course, like if I really want it, which I do most times, I ask him, yeah, I do want to know what you think. What do you think about this? Or like, you know, what, what do you, like, I want your opinion, you know? And then at that point, I have already gone through my own process of emotionally processing it and come to my own conclusion. And then I can decide whether his opinion, his suggestion, his advice matches what mine is within my own consciousness. So when you go to someone and they're just telling you what they think you should do right away, it can be very confusing because you haven't cleared your own energy to come to your own knowingness of what is what you need to do in your own body. And then you just feel like confused, like, okay, well, this person said I should do this thing. And then I go and talk to someone else and they said I should do this thing when all you really wanted was for someone to hold space and be a mirror for you to figure out what you want to do. This is why holding space emotionally for someone is so beautiful because we are respecting their timeline of how they are growing their consciousness. And I don't have to agree. So say a friend comes to me and I hold space for them and they come to a conclusion that I, I wouldn't do in my timeline. They're like this, but this is their truth. This is how they want to move through their timeline. And this is where they're at. That's beautiful. There's no judgment here. There's no me telling them, no, 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 you shouldn't do that. Uh, if they ask me, if they say, I want to know your opinion, what would you do in the situation? I can say, well, I would do this. But again, I have to respect their timeline and whatever they end up doing, whatever they want to do on their timeline is their timeline. And that's beautiful because they are growing their consciousness in that way. And that is their responsibility. It is not my responsibility to fix them or have them do how I would live my timeline because that's also not them being their authentic selves. Like if they did what I told them all the time, they might as well be me, you know, and that's not their truth. That is like, I need to do what is good for me. I need to be my authentic self. Everyone needs to be their version of their authentic selves. And how we can aid each other in this is one, ask people, ask the people that you love. Like if you don't, if this is something that's completely new to you, You can send people this podcast, you can share this with them, or you can explain to them, this is how I want to be hosted, you know? This is what it means to me. You can educate the people that you love to hold space for you. And then what I love is now I'm in a community of people who I would say 99% of them understand this and they can actually speak this language, that they come to me and they ask me, do you have space to hold for me right now? And I will tell them straight up, like I have friends where they, they call me, like my, my core crew, you know, they call me and they're like, do you have space to hold? And I'm like, I don't right now, but in an hour I do. Or like, I'll let you know. And that's really beautiful because that's me honoring myself. And also I love them. So of course I want to hold space for them. And that's also them honoring me. Because if you just come and like dump on someone, that's also not very nice. And with between Ferdy and I, we are asking each other this all day long, or at least I'm asking him. Uh, he asks me a lot and then sometimes he doesn't and it's okay. Um, because I will tell him straight up, I don't have space for this right now. Uh, but I can talk about this later, you know? And that's the thing is like with people that you love, it's good to have like a a network because you shouldn't put it all on one person. And like, like Faraday is not the one that hosts me emotionally all the time. Of course we hang out all the time and we love each other. And so we're there for each other most of the, like most of the time. Are we, you know, like, but 
it is too much to put on one person. And then, of course, you want to be able to host yourself first. So this is why in a lot of my podcasts, I talk about journaling, sending voice memos to yourself, do some sort of outward expression of what's happening internally within yourself so that you can start hosting yourself emotionally because I'm giving you this kind of rough guideline of like what is the general way of how people like to be hosted when you start hosting yourself you will figure out this is actually specifically how I like to be hosted like I have some friends where when they ask me do you have space like the first thing they actually really need in that moment is not to talk like sometimes when people are triggered emotionally they just need a hug and sometimes they just need someone to sit in silence with them and then just having that external person that loves and cares for them and holding space makes it so that they can help release the energy going through their body so everyone is different I told you what helps me like I love it I love 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 when someone is like okay I notice this is happening um, let's not rush through this let's like really like move through this in a way that is helping you release the energy like I have a very close friend here where we were I'll give you an example we were all hanging out like all some of my very very close friends in Amsterdam like all Copan young people we're all met up in Amsterdam and we're in this cozy her cozy apartment and there's candles and like soft rugs and we're all like cuddling and she we tar- started talking about religion or something and then she asked me like oh yeah Brittany I've never really asked you about like you growing up in a cult and for me I have processed it you know like for the most part I mean there's always more uh, but she was like you know I've never really asked you like I know you have your podcast and I've heard the general stuff but I've never really asked you like how are you doing right now in this moment with this and I was just like whoa and then I just said but I don't want to take up space like with everyone else. And everyone was like, no, we want to hear, you know? And then I was like, I went into it. I really like shared my emotions and like what process I was in with it and how I feel in my timeline right now with it. And she was like, I really want to honor you and your process. Like, how is that? How is, how is that feeling for you right now? And I just started crying because I was like, wow, someone is holding space for me in a way that feels so good for my in my body that there was there was stuck energy that I hadn't I didn't even realize was there because I hadn't been hosted in that deep of a way with someone that I love so much and I trust to like be able to open up and this is another thing is like hosting someone in your emotions this is very vulnerable you know like this is like this is not like you just go talk to some random person and they host you in your emotions this is like People need to earn your earn the right to hear your story. This is something a quote I heard one time. So people need to earn your trust in order for you to feel comfortable opening up to them. And this can happen intuitively. This can happen through like knowing someone for a very long time. What I have found is that people who already have emotional intelligence skills, like the toolkit, the communication, it's, it's very easy for me to open up to them. Uh, because I feel like we're already we've already like gotten to this certain level of our own emotional intelligence of how we like to be hosted how you know we know that we can host other people and then there's people where uh, recently even I love very very much and I've even you know had there's one person in particular that you know I even dated him at one point and I love him but there was parts of myself that I didn't show to him emotionally because I was worried about being too much because every time I would open up and want to be hosted in my emotions he would shut down he would become emotionally avoidant and so I just didn't show this part of myself to him but then there was this feeling of like feeling alone around him in certain ways like when I was moving through something because this is also just part of life you know this is like And this year, I really made the standard for myself that all of the people that get access to me on like, you know, get access to me on like my very personal level, like people who I consider part of my soul family, like my core family, where I have like in WhatsApp their name and then family, they need to meet the standard of being able to host me emotionally because I automatically do this for them. I do this for everyone I really care about. And so I had this straight up conversation with him where I was like, 
I just feel alone around you sometimes. And this is, this is how, this is like, I want to be met emotionally and I'm here. And like, I don't want to feel like I'm too much when I'm sharing my emotions. And of course, only when you have space, but this is how I, f- I want to be met in my relating to people. And he was like, wow, I feel really honored that you are being this straight up with me because I want to meet you there. And he, on his own journey, has been doing a lot of building his emotional intelligence toolkit, you know, and like reading a lot of different things and releasing a lot of his traumas and understanding, you know, how he was raised and like how that affected his. And he's like, I've been really reflecting recently on how, yeah, like how you were so open and so you know, vulnerable with me. And I just kind of would shut down around you. And I want to say that I'm sorry that I did that. And I was like, Ooh, because, you know, with a lot of people, it's like, I can take it or leave it. But when you are ready to be met on this depth of emotion, you really have to be okay with disconnecting from people who you love very deeply And of course, I'm not saying like kick them out of your life, but like disconnecting from you giving your energy to them if they're not able to meet you and where you need to be met right now. And so I was I was nervous to talk to him because I was like, you know, like it would make me sad, like not that it would I am complete within myself. I'm in the knowingness that I'm met by myself and the people that are closest to me that I love. And that loved me very much. And the energy feels really good going back and forth. And also, of course, I would love for him to meet me there, you know. And he did. And and it's beautiful. And he's coming over. He's just flew back to the country. And we're going to hang out soon. And I'm just so excited to keep raising my standard by how much I am allowed. I am it's like how deep you are allowing yourself to go with yourself and host yourself and really be straight up with yourself on where you're at and how you're feeling and allow the energy to go through your body is how much you're able to host other people so I invite you to look into your shadows to really face your darkness and know that at the bottom of all of it, you're going to realize that you are unconditionally loved by yourself and the universe and that everything is perfect. And there's so much joy and connection and pleasure and fun and adventure to be had on this timeline when we release this fears of, of, of feeling, of this fears of opening our hearts, of this fear of rejection, this fear of, of it's like we... And so many people create disconnection because they're worried about being rejected by other people. But then what they're actually doing is rejecting the the other people ahead of time because they're not opening their hearts. They're not allowing themselves to be vulnerable, to be met. And so it's like you're, (laughs) um, in English, we have a phrase called catch 22, but it basically just means that you are from the start creating the self-fulfilling prophecy of disconnection by not opening yourself up but a lot of people don't know how to open themselves up so this is why I'm making this podcast (laughs) so I really believe that as a society this is what's going to heal all of us is when we can really allow ourselves to hold ourselves and whatever emotions are coming up hold ourselves in love free of judgment free of fear and just allow the energy to go through our body knowing that we are grounded in our love for ourselves and grounded in the we are worthy of connection no matter what we're feeling no matter what's moving through us because we are souls on this timeline and that's beautiful and when if if everyone did this it would just feel so good because we're all like holding space for ourselves holding space for each other and like just the energy is just moving through all of us and we're growing our consciousness in a way that feels really good in our bodies so (sighs) yeah taking a deep breath on that I feel like there's so much to say I was coaching someone the other day and this is one of the questions they were asking me about like yeah how do I what does it actually mean to host someone in their emotions um and I think it's really about like we are here. Yeah, you can go through your timeline and figure out and grow your consciousness as much as you want alone. 
And also, it is so beautiful to witness and honor each other's experience. It is not your responsibility to fix anyone else to just because they've shared their story with you, shared their emotions with you. All they need you to be is this grounded presence of love. And then they can, it's like, it's like when someone comes to you, this happens a lot with women. They come to each other and they're like connecting through complaining. So like a woman comes to me and she's like, oh, my life is like this. My partner is like this. And I could be like, yeah. And also my partner is doing this and my life is, you know, bad in this way. Or I could be this grounded presence of love where I'm like, you know, and fully in my power to remind her of her power, you know, and where I'm like, how is that feeling for you? You know, what, what, what are you moving through in order to believe these things? And, and also I'm here to remind you of your power that you are loved and you are unconditionally worthy, worthy of all the beautiful things that you want in your life. And then they can snap out of that fear, snap out of that negative belief to like, yeah, actually that's true. And oh my God, I was able to be hosted and allow the energy to go through. And now I can learn because I always believe that if an emotion is coming up, it is not something to be judged and shoved away. Like, oh, I'm bad because I feel sad today or depressed or even angry, you know, it's like, okay, why is this happening? My consciousness, my soul, my, you know, a higher version of ourselves is trying to tell me that something is off in my alignment. Like that it's trying to teach me something because that's the only reason why I would have an, like a negative emotion come up. So it's like, okay, what do I need to learn here? How can I grow in this moment? How is this happening for me? So when you can transform and allow the energy to go through and transform all of this emotion into something positive, into you growing your consciousness, into more connection. And this is why even when you're upset at someone, you can choose to allow it. If you can honor yourself, be hosted maybe by someone else, and then go speak to the person and be like, from my heart, this is what's going on. This straight up, this is what's going on. A lot of people don't want to do that with each other because they're worried about disconnection. If I tell them this, is, like I'm upset with them or whatever, then it's going to cause disconnection. So I better just not say anything. When act in actuality, you are creating more disconnection because people can feel the energy and it's going to come out in some way. And if you let it, if you keep pushing it down, it's going to bounce out and like go exponentially a lot more negative than you realize. Whereas, or you're going to disconnect from yourself. I think that's actually the worst. If we don't speak up for ourselves and what's an honor, what's happening in our body with the people that are, you know, that, that are, that things are happening in a quote unquote negative way, then we are actually disconnecting from ourselves. And I'm talking about people where, you know, you love them, you want to keep having a connection with them or like people where they're coming into your life for a reason to teach you to speak up. This is really important. And when we are allowing ourselves to speak after we've hosted ourselves, maybe been hosted by someone else and then go and speak our truth with that person, we're actually creating an opportunity for connection like on a very deep level. Because when you care about someone so much that you're willing to be straight up with them about what's going on with you, even if it's something that you're upset at them for, it's because you love them enough to want to keep the connection going and actually deepen the connection. Because it's not about what happens, it's about how we choose to respond to it. And sometimes disagreements, sometimes like, you know, s moments of disconnection happen so that we have an opportunity to actually deepen our connection with someone and learn something about ourselves, learn something about them, grow our consciousness in some way. So all of it can be something really, really positive if we choose to face it, move through it in a way that feels good in our body and speak up for ourselves. <sighs> so I'm going to leave you with that. So much more I could say. Let me know how you feel about this or if this sparks any more questions for you. And just so you know, I'm in, in person here on the island. I'm offering human design and astrology readings, which are really beautiful. Uh, so you can message me about that. And because I love meeting up with all of you in person. And then I also offer um, online coaching. So let me know if you want to go deeper in some way. And send you guys all lots of love. Have a beautiful day.